Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I am so happy to welcome my guest today, Chloe Troutman. Chloe Troutman is known to be the most outspoken member of the MTV reality show Siesta Key. Chloe now hosts a blog called Concept by Chloe, which is a platform where women from all walks of life can get advice, whether you think you need to hear it or not. Her blog focuses on health, fashion, beauty tips, and relationship. But more important, Chloe has had a spiritual awakening. And to me, it's just so beautiful to hear that from somebody who is so young at the beginning and will help other people move along their journey. So welcome, Chloe. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for that introduction. And I am honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So I find you very interesting because here you are on this reality show and we all know what reality shows are about. There's so much drama and arguing and all that other kind of stuff. Um, and yet you're so spiritual now. When did you first know you were sensitive to the spirit world? Well, when I was younger, I would say up until the age of seven, I would see, I call them dots. Now I know that I'm seeing energy, but back then I just called them my dots and they just were little floating dots everywhere I would see. And they were always blue and red. And I would tell my mom, I see the dots, I see the dots. And I was a very sensitive child. I had a lot of anxiety and I struggled with being in big groups. So from a very young age, I knew I was sensitive to the spiritual world. And my great grandmother was a very enlightened spiritual being. So my family understood that about me. I'm the only girl granddaughter in my family and everyone was very protective over me. So I just kind of always known and I've always throughout my whole life had a very, very good intuition. And I always understood manifesting. And from a very young age, I saw how what I spoke became my reality. And it was only until nine months ago when I really start started to understand what all of this was and meant. So what happened nine months ago? Well, nine months ago, I went through a pretty rough breakup and I was really struggling and I was laying in my bedroom one night trying to fall asleep and on my grandmother's birthday her name was Chloe as well and we had a very close relationship because she helped raise me she came and spoke to me and I've never had her do this she passed away four years ago and she said to me there is more to life than you believe seek the truth and you will find the answers for true happiness. And I felt her, I heard her. And in the corner of my room, my dots that I see became very close together in almost the shape of a person. So I knew it was her. And I had something pop up on my phone, just the link. And I opened the link. I've never been able to find the videos again, but it was a 10 series videos explaining the darkness that is here on earth and then explaining enlightenment and spirituality and the right people just began to flood into my life, all spiritual beings. And I had an elder enter my life, Lisa, that help, has helped guide me on my journey. That's wonderful. It's yeah. so wonderful, even how it happened. So, and had the show that you were on ended at that point or were you out of that show at that point? So we were in the middle um, of our break. So we had finished filming season 3B. And so we were off because it was also in the middle of the COVID and the lockdown and all of that. And we only began season four 
at the beginning of November, filming season four at the beginning of November. So I had had about five months to seek the truth and discover enlightenment and find the divine white light within. And then we began filming season four back in November. And how has that shifted? Like, is it different on the set now with you? Because you're not the same person. Yes, it definitely has. I think at first I wasn't prepared for how hard it was going to be for me. And in the beginning of the season, I definitely struggle with old Chloe and new Chloe, because there are some people on our show that are definitely pretty big skeptics of my transformation. And I understand that. And it wasn't until recently because I decided to take a step back from filming. And I took about two months off while they all went to an island and filmed. And I got to really start to dig within of, can I find my fit on this show now that I have transformed? And thankfully the producers and MTV are working with me to allow me to find my new fit so that I can help spread the message that I know that I came back here to help spread. Well, you know what's so wonderful about that? There's no coincidences, okay? So you're on a television show, okay? And then you have this whole enlightenment, but you have a platform now to bring it to millions of people. Okay, and millions of people who are your age who don't understand it, but who seek it so much. So I think that's absolutely wonderful. Yes, it's definitely been a journey. And being that I am so young, it was a little lonely because I began to speak a different language mm -hmm. than my friends and family. And that was really, really hard for me for a while. But now, I think more than ever, people are really warming up to the new me and are actually trying to support that and understand it more. And at first, I think some of the souls that are around me were like, oh, no, like, because they knew deep within that they would have that hard time making the shift themselves. So they were so no, 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 no. Chloe, the biggest drama starter, the biggest pot stirrer, the one who partied and drank more than anyone else, there is no way that she could have had this transformation. But now they are really seeing after nine months that I did and that it's a really, really good positive thing. Well, that's wonderful. But you know, you say the new Chloe, this is not the new Chloe. This is the no. real Chloe, you know, um, in everybody's spiritual journey, it takes a lot of courage to come out of the closet, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I've been seeing spirit from birth, according to my parents, you know, but it took me a very long time to come out of the closet because it's scary. Will I be accepted? You know, and, and you are young and I have to applaud you because you're brave. Okay. And what you're bringing forward is absolutely so wonderful you know um I, I think it's great so now you have this online blog concept by chloe so what are you yeah. doing through? is that a subscription service so it's a subscription based lifestyle blog in the midst of lockdown i felt this call to start something and do something and i really didn't know what it was at first I began to work out. I've lost almost 45 pounds in wow. the last year. I've become vegan. I drink very little, if ever now, which is very wild for some people who have known me for a long time. And in the midst of all of it, I just felt this calling to create something. And at first I didn't really know what it was. There's lots of lifestyle blogs out there that are about fashion and travel and mental health and stuff like that. And I've watched my blog over the past almost year now kind of transform with me. So it's less about 
fashion or traveling or anything like that. And it's more about mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health and how a lot of people have the physical and mental health thing down, but bringing in the spiritual health into it and how that can really just open up doors for you. And I put out weekly videos and some of them are me meditating. Sometimes it's about a crystal that I want to talk about that week, about emotional health and how to become an observer of that and not allow it to become you. And it's just really cool to watch my business and my life merge together so that I can help spread the message of going within and healing yourself. Yeah, that's pretty wonderful because that's where I am. My, my business, my personal life, my passion are all wrapped up into one. And when that happens, you know you're on your path. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty beautiful. How can people subscribe to the blog? So you go to conceptbychloe.com and the homepage, you can see everything that's there. I'm actually in the middle of transforming my whole website. So if you go and check it out right now in a couple of weeks, it's going to be pretty different. But then at the top, there are different tabs that are about healthy habits and weekly cocoa, which are my weekly videos. And when you click one of those, it will just direct you to making an account. Oh, okay. So I got to do that when I go home. Oh. It's, it's snowing here. So it might take me a while to get home. Um, so you do you basically focus on women? I do. I, I have men that subscribe to Concept by Chloe, but I do these weekly goddess groups which are Zoom meetings with a smaller group of women because I feel that I connect most with women and understanding their journeys. Well, that's, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, so do you have a connection to the Universal Mother or to Mary? I do. My birthday, September 7th, is actually Mother Mary's birthday. There's been skeptic that her birthday is the 7th or the 8th. I'm, I'm going to believe that it's the seventh. <laughs> okay. Well, I believe it's the eighth because that's the day I got married. So is it? Yeah. Well, I, I was born right at the cusp of going from seventh to eighth. Uh, well, you know, that's pretty auspicious. Yeah. So um, you have some tattoos on your back. Can you, can you show I us do. and then talk about them? Yes. So starts up here. Okay goes down to Mother Mary. Okay, so we I, can see Mother Mary. Can you lift that up again? Okay, we see it. Okay, so what is the first symbol you, that you have? So on? what I am basically doing is I'm going down my spine and I'm getting my version of the chakra system, the main seven chakras, which are behind you. And the first one for the crown chakra, I got the sun, the moon, the stars, and the waves. And then for the throat chakra, or for the third eye, I got a butterfly for transformation because I went through a big transformation of my third eye opening and realizing that once it's open, it can never be closed again. And then I got the throat chakra, which is half my face and half cheetah for power and using my voice and nothing but power so that everyone that I reach on the show, that I'm spreading the message of love and light. And then I just recently got my heart chakra, which is Mother Mary, because I believe Mother Mary was sent to us and her story was to speak about the divine love and how she is here for absolutely everyone. Oh, right. And if you read my book, you know that's what she repeats. Over yes. and over again, there are no barriers to her. You yeah. know, um, before we began the show, we were talking a little bit about Astara, about how it's non-denominational. And yeah. that's really, I feel like the message of us being in 5D right now is we have to break down these barriers so that we can go forward. And you speak to that. And that's really important. Do you get resistance from people, like not on the show, but your age, or is your... Is your blog bringing in people who are your age? Yeah, we, I go to a weekly Astara meeting and we were actually talking about this last week 
where I'm seeing more than ever women and men my age have this calling and feeling that they can't shake and they're not really sure what to do or how to do it, but they feel a calling that there's more to life. I think this past year Mm -hmm. has been very difficult in many ways, but I see so much positivity that it has brought. And I think it was a big year of shifting and mass awakening. And I've seen more than ever so many souls that are coming to me that have watched me and watched my transformation online and have this calling to want to know what I'm talking about. And a lot of people are really struggling with where to start. And I think that's what Concept by Chloe is, is it's a foundation of a start to learn what it truly means to be enlightened. So how do you suggest people start? (laughs) Well, first of all, I suggest turning off all electronics and getting off as many electronics as possible because it's all a distraction. And I suggest, my first kind of thing is speaking about emotional and mental health and how it's really about silencing the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind plays a massive, massive trick on all of us all the time. And when you silence your mind, you can really begin to listen to your heart, which I believe is that's where we all should be coming from, is from the heart. And I help people learn how to meditate because I believe in stillness comes clarity. And I see so many people struggle with, I just can't meditate. I can't turn my mind off. My mind wanders. And I just remind everyone to be patient because over time, just like anything in life, practice, practice, practice. And I help teach about crystals because for me, crystals have really spoken to me. And I really explain to everyone that not everything that I talk about is going to resonate with you and that it's important to go with what resonates with you. There's books that I suggest to read, Unlocking the Seven Secrets of the Heart. Your book has become a book that I suggest, Mm -hmm. Conversations with Mary. And yeah, there's just, there's so much to it. And I teach people how routine and discipline is very important and to take time out of your day to have self-love and self-care is very important as well. And how does your family feel about this shift? Oh. Your mom, how does your mother feel about this? Oh, my mother is really, really beyond proud of me. Oh. I think she should. they, thank you. Yeah, they, they all are kind of a little bit in awe because I have always been their very, outspoken when I walk in a room you can feel it and they've all are very religious I was raised Christian and some of them have been a little skeptical about the spirituality of it Mm -hmm. and I think more and more they're starting to be open to it but you know everyone's on their own journey I've learned In the beginning, when I first started my journey, I was like, everyone's coming with me. You're all awakening. You're all being enlightened. And we're all going on this path, whether you were my friend, family, or even an acquaintance, I was ready to have everyone come with me. And I've learned now that just planting the seeds is the way to go. And it's up to the individual to water that seed. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is and sometimes it's hard in the beginning because you it's not only about you want them to believe but you want to be validated like what I believe is true so um it's important that you've learned that now because you know as you go forward you know there will be people who are skeptics and you know what it's their journey you know it's it's how they have to embrace it and go um to their place and that's that's important so do you see spirit around other people or you just you just see them coming through for you? I just have, I can feel and I just have a deep knowing. Yeah, and that's more important than seeing, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, when I talk to certain individuals, I can just feel and I know, I do a lot of what I call remote viewing 
So I'm able to take myself out of my own body and kind of look at something going on from all angles, whether that's happening currently or something that can happen in the future or something that had happened. And I feel in my heart chakra a lot, my heart will begin to become rapid or my, I can feel my pace slowing down when there's some sort of message that I'm receiving that I need to give to someone. You know, that's so funny because it doesn't happen to me the way it used to, but whenever I used to connect to Mary, my heart used to go crazy, like absolutely crazy. As I've gotten older, it hasn't happened quite like that anymore. I think because I'm so used to her coming through now. So that's also for you, um, an indication of divinity, okay? Of, of, of who's around you and how that's around you. So that's really, really nice that that's happening to you and that you're recognizing it. And I think it's, I'm becoming more skilled with it and understanding it now that I've been on my journey for a while. And I see that the more time that I spend with myself and going within, the better and better I'm getting with connecting with spirit. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's like, it's a muscle, you know, um, that you're exercising and the more communication you have and the more open you are. I mean, it's just downloading onto you, Chloe. It's all around you. It's just, it's beautiful. And it's, it's um, been very intense. And I've watched synchronicities that happen so often, the occurrences going on. And when I was reading your book in the very beginning, the one thing that really stuck out to me was how Mother Mary is blue. And this past year, everything in my house is blue. I mean, you can see kind of this artwork I have here blue, but the carpet is blue, my bed frame is blue. And that was one of those really eye-opening things for me and that I now know that I am very connected to Mother Mary as well. And I think I'm am here this time around to really help spread her message. Oh, I love that. And she loves that. Believe me, she loves that. So when you work with people or you're teaching meditation, do you call her in? Yes, I do. I, I call in all archangels, God, Jesus, Mother Mary, any of their angels, any of my spirit guides. And I make sure to only bring in divine white light. And I have whoever I'm speaking to envision the white light coming down through their crown and in through their whole chakra system. And what crystals do you use personally? Well, I have tons. <laughs> I'm a little bit of an extremist. So when I first began this journey, I have a little bit over a hundred crystals now. Um, I switch it up. I do whichever crystals I feel calling to me. My Probably the crystal that resonates with me the most is rose quartz. I actually have rose quartz wow. sitting wow. right here. And one of my other crystals that I really like to use is Moldavite, the green crystal. I have a ring that I wear um, that I just, I love this crystal, but whichever, lots of amethyst and selenite, but whichever really feels calling to me. That's great. So what would you say to people your age? So you know what they're all about and everybody's out having fun and or they're trying to start their careers and they're looking into different things. What would you say to them? I would say you have no idea how fun life can truly be. And that magic, that thing that we all don't believe is real is very, very real. And when you begin to look within and heal yourself, you just begin to see the truth and how none of this matters. The materialistic stuff doesn't matter. And the real purpose that we were put on earth to do and how important it is and how you should 
don't waste another moment being asleep because once you awaken, there's nothing like it. So what is the real purpose? What is the reason we're all here? Well, I believe that over time, there has been a lot of darkness that has taken over our planet. And I believe that this time around, we are meant to heal ourselves so that we can begin to heal those around us Perfect. Yeah. and heal humanity and then eventually heal Mother Earth and create a new planet of all love and kindness. Okay, I need to challenge you to change your word from believe to know. Okay. I know. You know this is true. Oh, I, I do. I know it. I feel it. I see it. All, sense it. All of it. And I think that most of us who have been on this path and recognize it, we know this is what it's about. You know, it's just the more public ones are about teaching everybody else about how to raise up that energy. And thank God for people like you who are doing it. So do you have any upcoming events? I do with um, the person who connected you and I, her name is Lexi. She's known by Lipstick Lex. She creates artwork out of lipstick and kisses. So her, all of her art is created with love. Her and I have decided to join forces and create a one day woman's wellness retreat which will take place in her art gallery here in Sarasota, Florida at the end of March. And it's all about inner creativity, spirituality, entrepreneurship, and really going within. And I believe that this is the start to something really, really big. Well, it will be the start to something really, really big. That's very exciting. I love when artists get involved in this stuff because they're they know how to operate from their souls. So that's really beautiful. And if people want to see um, Lexi's work, she's on Instagram. What is yeah. her Instagram handle? Do you know? It's, it's lipsticklex.official. And what is your Instagram? I'm all lowercase Chloe Troutman. And then my business Instagram is concept by Chloe. But Lexi and I have an Instagram for our retreats that are starting and we will be announcing that actually this week on both of our instagrams well, that's our, it's going to be called metamorphosis oh i love it is the retreat title i love that so that's very exciting so are you doing everything in florida or are you doing zooms or everything is in florida we do eventually want to get online and do zooms and yeah well, I wish I was there so I could go. I wish I was there to get out of the snow too, but. Yes, lips, I always call her lipstick Lex, but Lexi would just be so honored in her. And I have talked about maybe one day having you as a guest speaker. Oh, I would love that. Oh. I like any excuse to get to Florida. Where I'm okay. supposed to be right now, but couldn't happen because of COVID, but yes. that's okay. Um, okay, I have to ask you, who's Joseph? Um, that's my grandpa. Um, because he is sitting next to you. Okay. Um, he doesn't like that. Um, is he passed? He's not, but it could, it could be. There's a Joseph. Okay. Is he ill? He's very, he's very old. My grandpa's 93. Okay. I can feel them when they're 93. Okay. Um, because I feel like he is next to you. And this is your grandmother's husband? Yeah. Oh they my were God. Together a very, very long time. He loves him, loves him, loves him. She wants you to listen to the things that he says. Okay. Even if they're in contrary, she wants you to listen. Okay. But when they're in their 90s, I their souls are not as concrete in their body. They flow. Okay. So she's saying that he wants you to listen. And he's saying that like his soul is saying, um, he wants his, the, he wants his legacy to move on. Okay. So talk to him. Yes. He's, um, he has no great grandchildren yet. And he's very adamant about that happening. Yeah. Well, it's not happening yet for you. So. No, 
not me. I'm more talking my cousin whose name is Joseph as well. Okay. So that'll happen. But there's another Joseph in spirit as well. Someone just screamed out and my name is Joseph. So there's another Joseph in spirit. Um, who's from Illinois? We all are. I am as well. Okay, because whoever this person is, is from Illinois or somewhere over there. Um, so you can find out about that because they're also moving, moving through you. Um, and it's quite beautiful because heaven is clapping, 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 clapping. You know, you just, just continue what you're doing. I'm so grateful for what you're doing of how you're raising the energy of this planet and opening up, you know, the mind and the souls of of people, you're not only your age, but people who are older, you know? So thank you, thank you, thank you. That means a lot. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. If so, please like, share, and comment, and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much, Chloe. I so appreciate you being on. It is truly my honor, Anna. Thank you so much.